Thank you for listening to the Matt's Movie Reviews podcast, available on Podbean, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, and Stitcher. Also, please follow Matt's Movie Reviews on Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, Reddit, Instagram, and MeWe. And of course, be sure to visit mattsmoviereviews.net for the latest reviews, top 10 lists, and more. Now, on to the show. The power of God hit me, and I was instantly healed. This man's spinal cord had been severed, and he was totally healed. To see a little five-year-old girl that's never heard before, when all of a sudden the ears open. That's enough for me. I don't need to see a doctor's report. Jump up from there and start running. The standardly understood definition of a miracle is an occurrence that has no other good explanation. There are many people mistake things that happen entirely by chance as some sort of miracle. I mean, there are hundreds of millions of people who claim to have experienced divine healing. Are you going to dismiss all of that? My passion has been to bridge the gap between the intellectual and the supernatural. I heard all of these testimonies of people having extraordinary miracles. What I wasn't seeing was objective evidence. So I decided to go find it myself. I just speak to all pain in the shoulder in Jesus' name. Is the pain gone? And I say full healing in the name of Jesus. Why do you think the miracles don't happen when the cameras are on? Some testimonies are false. Some testimonies are exaggerated. Miracles don't happen. The moment you investigate them carefully from a scientific perspective, they unravel. Be skeptical. Have you ever seen anything like this? No. Wanting evidence is not a lack of faith. There's power and proof. Two or three miracles are anomalies, but thousands of miracle case studies would change the way we think about the world. Hello and welcome to the Matt's Movie Reviews Podcast. I am your host, Matthew Pegovich, and this is episode number 399. Available now on digital, DVD, and Blu-ray is Send Proof, a documentary that investigates if there is medical evidence for miracles. Featuring interviews with prominent figures in both the Christian and skeptic movements, including Dr. William Lane Craig, Bill Johnson, James Randi, and Dr. Michael Shermer, Send Proof is a fascinating documentary that attempts to bridge the gap between faith and science with an inquisitive spirit and open mind. And joining me now is the director of Send Proof, Mr. Elijah Stevens. Elijah, so thank you so very much for your time today. Well, thank you for having me on. I'm really excited. I am too. I mean, when I first got an email about this uh, movie, about your documentary, Send Proof, you know, it's a type of uh, documentary that's right up my wheelhouse. I, um, I dedicate a part of my website to, you know, what I call faith on films. Every Sunday I put up like a different review um, mm-hmm. about Christian movies, um, you know, can be based on Bible epic, can be based on true stories. Um, like the latest movie I did was um, Prince of Egypt, which was the animated okay. film. Um, and so when I saw this documentary, I was like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to watching this. And it definitely lived up to the expectations that I had for it. it What's really interesting is when I read up about the history of this film, I mean, like a lot of independent films, this film was like years in the making. It was. Um, but from what from what I read, this is originally the idea for it was a website to be made back in 2014. The idea was to get testimonials from different people about miracles in their lives. Um, and then that would be kind of the, 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 the jumping point for a documentary. Mm-hmm. But there was an unexpected turn to your movie, which is unlike any other movie that I covered before, which is that there was a clear case of divine intervention that really fast-tracked the making of this movie to the documentary we see today. For those who don't know the story about how exactly this, you know, documentary got into like the next gear and got made, what exactly what happened to you? 
um, to because it's almost like a field of dreams moment where you know if you build it, they will come. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I was trying to collect testimonies uh, via website uh, on miracles. I, I, I think it's the most interesting topic for me, and so it really didn't go anywhere. Um, and then one day, in fact, I was at a point where I, I was ready to put it down. And then one day mm-hmm. I was at my house and, uh, you know, someone said, this guy's at your church, he's a speaker and, uh, he called your name out. And I just thought that's the craziest thing I've ever heard. Um, and so I drove to the church and he gives me a prophetic word, which is a word that people feel like god inspired and he just told me some details about myself and my life and he's like god's commissioned you to go make a movie and it's going to touch lots of doctor lives and so i from that married the process like there's no other description for it is just i would work at this until it was done and so that was really the launching point for finishing the film out and um you know we we are able to raise a kickstarter after that and then you know film takes time it takes money it takes energy um i had to go through a large growth curve this is my first full length documentary and so mm-hmm. um it really was a process but i would just look back at that moment um i had recorded it on my phone and i would listen to it sometimes when i was at low points to just keep going so you are at this point you have you know clearly a sign to step forward with with this documentary i'm really curious though what's the first step that you make after that um, what is it that you need to do first for your documentary? It's about setting up interviews. It's about setting up funding. Is it mm-hmm. about more research? What's that first initial step that you had inside of yourself, which is, you know, this long path I'm going to take, what's that first step forward for you as a filmmaker? Um, for us, it was finding a research team that could pull this off with credibility. Um, I think there's so much bias one way or the other toward miracles, and we wanted – people that we thought were intellectually honest um, and no one's neutral on the topic, but you can deal with your biases Um, and people that were really going to take the questions seriously on each case. And so we found the global medical research Institute and um, I really enjoy working with them. They're high caliber people. They're thoughtful um, and that's the f- first step, but you're doing all your steps at once. Like we're trying to raise funds. We're trying to storyboard. Um, but that feels like one of the first steps in my mind. The global medical research Institute. That's what's well, very interesting having that come across. And I looked at their website and mm-hmm. they pretty much their thing is bridging the gap between science and faith, which is exactly what the, 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 you mm-hmm. know, the, the mission statement that you want from your documentary too. Um, applies rigorous methods of evidence-based medicine to study Christian spiritual healing practices. You know, it's really interesting. I don't know uh, about you, but it seems like that's the notion of, you know, I myself am a Christian as well. I'm a Catholic to be more more specific. Um, Mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but the the notion of of prayer, I think it's like as a PR kind of front, it's been taken a battering over the last couple of years or so. Um, you know, the whole adage, thoughts and prayers, et cetera, and a lot of the, the negative reaction people have towards that now. When you see what docu- um, documentation um, the Global Medical Research Institute has in regards to prayer, in regards to miracle, in regards to, mm-hmm. you know, medicine, et cetera, um, while for us, you know, there's no no denying about the power that prayer has, do you think a place like this is very important these days where people might look at prayer in a very even more of a skeptical light than previously before? Well, yeah. And I, I mean, all science is, is truth-seeking. So prayer is different than a supernatural event, and we kind of need to clear that up. Um, so Studying prayer is, you know, a person closes their eyes, they talk to a spiritual being. You can study that with science. You can't say God did something as a scientist. You have to put your philosopher or theologian hat back on. Um, But I do think that it's been taboo to study prayer 
for so many reasons because I think there is a good thing about science trying to like limit bias. And if you bring your religious biases in, sometimes you're going to see things that aren't there. Um, and so it's really needed for people to ask the hard questions and to research case studies. I think that's the most helpful place. Um, in the Catholic side, there's, of course, Lords that does something like this. But for us Protestants, we did not have that mechanism. And so mm -hmm. Global Medical Research Institute is really um, helpful in that regard. The film itself, in regards to the spiritual context, is, is ma mainly focused kind of like more on the Pentecostal kind of charismatic sure. churches. Yeah. Um, but you do, you know, you tap into different things, like for example, the processes that the um the, the Vatican go through for beautification of, of saints. Right. Because they have to go through the whole process of like scientific backing of what a miracle mm -hmm. does look like in their context. When you were making the documentary. Um, was it always the, the case that you wanted to look at through, you know, the experiences of your own, your the own kind of denominations that you were used to? Um, uh, did you come across other processes of, say, some other religions, say, uh, mm -hmm. say maybe the Jewish religion or the Muslim religion in their own kind of like um, uh, takes mm -hmm. on miracles? Or um, was just too much of that out there? You had enough information where you are and you just wanted to stick to kind of like stick to what you know and you wanted to focus um, without getting too far into the weeds in regards to the whole yeah. miracle thing. Well, for me, um, part of the movie is since I'm in it is it's my intellectual journey of wrestling with miracles. Um, I talk right. about in the movie, you know, I grew up in an abusive home with a parent who believed in miracles gave to people that I would consider con artists today. And then, um, you know, you, you have to ask those hard questions for yourself. And so I was looking for prayer in Jesus' name was kind of the criterion. I, I, I wasn't particularly looking outside at other religions. I don't think other religions value miracle as much. Um, there's a lot of religions where it's not a necessity. I mean, Buddhism, for example, um, is not a supernatural religion at all. Um, and so I was really looking for something out that would fit the definition of miracle in the Christian tradition. Mm -hmm. You know, what's really great about this documentary is I mentioned in my introduction, you were approaching this with an open mind. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's not only interviewing, you know, people like, um, scientists who can back your claims and you're not only talking to mm -hmm. people with testimonies you're talking to people who are very openly skeptical not only to the mm -hmm. notion of miracles but to the notion of god himself mm -hmm. um and that's where you kind of like all, the, all these skeptical figures you know my, my experience is that you know when it comes to atheists or agnostics um that are, that are um not only say you know against the idea of a god but, but probably against the idea of religion in general they're mm -hmm. only more too only too happy to talk about their opinion and stuff in regards to that because sure. that's just what they do. When you reach out to them and you talk about your uh, your you know idea for this documentary, um, was it easy to get people on board to put their two cents forward in regards to their yeah. um, uh, opposition of what your uh, mission statement was? Well, I think they rooted for me in this mm -hmm. sense. Um, most skeptics say, I want evidence, go find it. If, if it exists, it would change my mind. And so I never felt this resistance. And I'm not the type of person to throw people under the bus or make them. I didn't want to make propaganda. Mm -hmm. um, and I think if you can't let the other side talk, you're building a propaganda film. And so my agenda was to document myself going on the journey to look, is, is there evidence that would convince me that miracles occur. Um, if other people are convinced, great. If not, I understand. I've, um, but I really enjoy talking with them. I think we all identify as this is people who care about the hardest questions of life. And so if you're in that community, most people are generous with each other and will give you their two cents. And so I found them very pleasant. Um, very kind, um, and I do not like this divide in our nation right now where 
you know, we brand people as like evil people who disagree with us rather than just go, this guy sees the world differently and truth matters. Um, but we can still have a cordial conversation and challenge each other and walk away better. And yeah. I love that about that process. The Matt's Movie Reviews Podcast is brought to you by 80s Tees. 80s Tees is an online retailer of licensed t-shirts and pop culture gear from your favorite movies, TV shows, cartoons, video games, comic books, and musicians. Celebrate your inner 80s nerd and click on the link in the show notes below to get the raddest retro t-shirts delivered to your door. The Matt's Movie Reviews Podcast is brought to you by Loot Crate. Founded in 2012, Loot Crate is the worldwide leader in fan subscription boxes. Loot Crate partners with industry leaders in entertainment, gaming, sports, and pop culture to deliver monthly themed crates, produce interactive experiences in digital content, and film original video productions. No matter what you geek out about, Loot Crate has a subscription box for you. To get your very own exclusive collectibles, apparel, and gear delivered to your door, be sure to click on the link in the show notes below. The Matt's Movie Reviews Podcast is also brought to you by Vudu. Watch the latest movies and TV shows anytime, anywhere. No subscriptions, no contract. Enjoy stunning quality in up to 4K ultra high definition at home and download and watch on your mobile device as well. To rent and buy from over 100,000 titles or watch thousands of movies free with Voodoo Movies on us, be sure to click on the link in the show notes below. Now, back to the show. I think, um, you know, for myself, my return back to the church happened during the time of the Hulk and the new atheism movement, which right. is kind of you know, counter, right. counter to what that whole thing was, right? Um, and I'm, you know, only recently I was listening to an interview with Francis Collins, and he was a mm. he's a renowned scientist himself yeah. and also a Christian. And he was talking about how he was good friends with Christopher, Christopher Hitchens, and you wouldn't mm-hmm. even think it, right? Um, right? Christopher Hitchens, of course, being one of the, you know, uh, what are they called, the, the four horsemen of the new atheism movement. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's a really good point there of how, you know, even within, you know, the new atheism movement itself, you know, there were alliances there were friendships with people mm-hmm. on the other side um and i think that was really interesting um but that's just a side now i want to ask a question about one of the people you interviewed which was um uh, james randy or mm-hmm. otherwise known as the great uh, randy right um, you know he has a challenge out there that's been out there for decades sure. which is called like the million dollar ch- challenge right he will give you a million dollars if you can give him evidence of you know mm-hmm. of the supernatural of the divine mm-hmm. When it comes to the notion of miracle, even if you presented a miracle to them, you say, here's mm-hmm. the science behind it, here's, here's video. I got video right here of a man, you know, uh, mm-hmm. lost his arm, he grew his arm back, etc. cetera. Mm-hmm. Would they still believe that it's a miracle? Or yeah. would they look at it and say, that's not a miracle. I believe that is just the natural evolution of our species. That's just the, what, what we are, what our bodies mm-hmm. now do from now on. Or they won't see it as supernatural, would they? Um, well, let, let me talk about James Randi's prize for a minute. Um, we started filming in 2015, and they they stopped running the prize because he ran into retirement. Um, mm-hmm. And it's not a prize based on show me evidence of something that's happened in the past. It It's something where you would have to put yourself under scientific conditions. They would make up some type of prototype and then perform a miracle before them, and then go to a second stage where you perform the same miracle again. Um, And so that was just outside of the scope of this film. Um, We weren't really trying to find healing ministers that would put themselves under that. Um, It's worth it, and it'd be very interesting to see what would come of it. I mean, I'm curious enough... I care. It's just, um, and there is this problem of methodological naturalism where skeptics think they're more open-minded sometimes than they are. So if you hold the idea, all there is, is, you know, a naturalistic universe made of particles, it creates this problem for you where if you did see miracles, you would 
create naturalistic explanations rather than divine ones. And so if you've already concluded all that is, there is is the natural world, you cannot by definition be open-minded about miracles. And mm. I think – that was one of the big like, oh, I, I never saw it that way before things that I, I concluded as I was going through the process. How much experience did you have with interviewing people before to undertaking this um, documentary? Because I find that um, a lot of the times when I talk to filmmakers and they interview had interview heads, that they find themselves saying, themselves, wait a minute, how do I go about doing this, uh, doing this exactly? And then over the years, it's kind of like they've developed their own style, their own methods mm-hmm. and their own process towards it. Is that the same thing that kind of happened to you? Did you develop your own kind of style regards to interviews? Yeah. Um, I mean, I, w- I was nervous at first. Um, I was nervous of offending people. Um, I think over time, the style I developed was I would ask people questions at the edge of my knowledge And it made it really entertaining. If I felt a question was interesting, that's where I wanted the interview to go. Um, At first, when I started out, I was just trying to get information I knew that they had that would be good for the film. But as you press in, you get the best out of people. Mm -hmm. And so that was what I learned through the process. But it it was my first... um, in interviews were the, these films, yeah. So you start off this whole process with asking for testimonials from people in regards to miracles. And as you're doing the documentary, you're actually talking to real-life examples mm-hmm. of miracles in action or, or the, the mm-hmm. result of them. A lot of these touching stories, like really are, sure. um, and about near-death, ex- near-death experiences, things that, shouldn't happen but did happen this just like in, in and then you have the reaction from the medical professionals themselves have no idea how to explain what did happen mm-hmm. when you are met with these stories what is the reaction from yourself do you find yourself within your own journey um just overcome by kind of like the, the emotion of, of this whole kind of process because while we're talking about miracles the the one thing we, we usually forget about is that there's a human story behind every miracle right, right? And, right and behind every for every miracle there's a soul there's a spirit there and there's also a heart there that's being touched and and, and mended uh, running from your eyes right and i th- i thought that was the most fascinating part was how much these things transformed people's lives um they seem to be these equivalent of 9-11 you know Mm. before 9-11 we think back the world was very different afterwards my world has radically changed and i think that is the experience of these people um many of them when they have this start seeing themselves as called into some type of full-time ministry because they you know, they think God can heal people and they want to pray for the sick or they want to tell people about God. And so it, it's this beautiful thing um, transforms their families. It brings them closer together. And so, yeah, that story part really, really just captivated me and it gave me a lot of hope Um and it answered a lot of questions for me that I've, I've struggled with for years. So it's uh, perhaps true to say that this process of making this documentary and, and being exposed to other people's miracles, I guess, in a certain way, it, it definitely has changed you very much, not only as a person, not only as a Christian, but also as a creative person as well. Here you are oh, making yeah. the film and you're learning new skills and you're developing your first film. It's a great film, by the way. I mean, the craft of the film is quite quite. Sometimes I come across documentaries and sometimes um, the idea is there, but the craft can't follow suit. In your case, the, the both kind of worlds like merge together it really well. It's a pretty film to look at and, and, and the, the photography is great and the editing is great. I mean, at the end of the day, you've learned something new, haven't you, in regards to who you are <laughs> as a person? A lot of stuff new, yeah. yeah. Mm, I mean, yeah. it's a fant- it's a fantastic thing, isn't it? I mean, I've been doing this for like fifteen years now, and the stuff that I've learned over the years, I never thought I would tell the truth. I, did, I even went back to university and like got a new you know stuff. And I, I haven't, didn't you actually like? Weren't you actually uh, a student yourself? Didn't you like get a couple of masters in the process of uh, making? I this did. Um, I studied science and religion as a master's and apologetics um, because I thought 
that's going to be where the hard questions would come up. And I, I love that process. I, I think one of the saddest things about the Western world, especially in the Western Christian world, is we've separated science and religion and I think they both inform each other. And mm. I love science. I, I think so highly of scientists. I love science too because I, I don't I don't believe in the, in the the kind of like that there should be any type of gap between the two. To me, mm-hmm. you know, the, the ability to use our minds and the ability to be inquisitive and such that that in itself it can is a miracle because what other species on this earth has it except for us? And I think it's just a beautiful thing. It really is. Um, you know, you're still asking for people to send in, send in proof uh, to the website, which is um, sendproof.com. People can share a miracle. Mm-hmm. Um, since the movie's come out, uh, have you come across even more stories that's, that's kind of really confirmed your own kind of mm-hmm. like, um, uh, you know, uh, approach to this whole thing? Well, I've set the website up so that the miracles that people send in go directly to GMRI. And so they start the research process of vetting these stories, gathering the records, making sure the person was sick and then cured. And then they go into the journals to make sure that this is not something that sometimes, you know, goes into spontaneous remission or something like that. And then they try to publish it in a peer review journal. And so they've got some cases that have come in that they're very excited about. Um, but who knows? It, it's a two-year process from beginning to end. Uh, if you gave me every document of a case right now, it would take two years to g- go through that. And what about for yourself in regards to this whole project? I mean, to me, this is like a never-ending kind of quest, a never-ending seeking. But it all can, also could be a, a never-ending um, uh, film project as well. I can imagine, right. you know, a YouTube channel or et cetera, or a TV serial where every episode is dedicated to a different miracle. I can, I could see that right. happening. Is there any, any kind of thought about the don't press in the head with something like that? Uh, I, I wrestled with it. I, there's a lot of topics that this brings up is, you know, w- one that I would be interested in is the claim of the demonic versus mental illness. And mm. how does that one work? I, I think that if, you know, someone gave me a million bucks, that would be my next project. Um, because I like the hard questions and I like talking to the experts who I don't know where this interview is going to go, but they know more than me and it sends me off on another rabbit trail. Like I like the investigation of it. Um, and so, yeah, it's very fulfilling to, to do that. And it's very fulfilling to watch. So for everyone out there, Um, listening right now send proof available on dvd and digital you can go to sendproof.com and you've got the options there of how you want to to watch this movie because it's a great documentary it's a such an interesting fascinating uh topic and the way that you went about to you know you could have easily just made a really kind of like a fluff piece kind of thing in regards to miracles and such but the fact that this movie is uh, about you know being inquisitive in regards to uh, you yourself being a uh, a Christian and a human being and, and being open to all to- all types of interpretations of the topic on hand makes it just much more fulfilling kind of uh, fulfilling movie, just like life itself, really. I mean, you yes. when you go through life, you have to go through, you know, the, the hard stuff and take on the hard tasks. And uh, I think this is just a, a really is a great movie. One of my favorite documentaries of the yeah. year, I'm sure I've got to say. And um, uh, Elijah Stevens, I thank you so very much for your time. And, you know, I, I really can't wait to see what you do next because I think um, you know, the, the documentary crafty, as I said before, is really quite something. I'd like to see what you do next. And, and when that happens, I'd love to talk to you again about it. Well, we'll make that happen. Thank you for watching the Matt's Movie Reviews channel. Please subscribe for more reviews, podcast interviews, and exclusive content. Also, if you would like to request a review and support my work, please join my Patreon via the link in the description below.